Hello and welcome to the second episode of Bible FIFA on FIFA 22. Here's a reminder of the team on screen. And this is what we came up against. A load of attackers playing at the back, an extremely attacking team. And that was reflected in the way the guy went 1-0 up with Kylian Mbappe in the 29th minute. It took me until the second half, though, to bounce back. This guy, truth be told, wasn't incredible at FIFA. I was just trying to score a load of worldies and faffed around for too long until I decided to just put the ball into the box to Mateus Cunha to equalise for 1-1. And then in the 64th minute, I win the ball back with Klosterman. Absolutely rinse the defender. Let's watch this again. Okay, one more time. Okay, a final time. And then I ball roll inside of Rente, play it into Klosterman, who at the time, I thought this was Torres or something, breaking through the middle. Actually, I played a 1-2 of him from the back. He came steaming forward. And I've now scored with the centre-back, Lucas Klosterman, and the silver non-rare in the previous episode, Brewster. So I've scored with a couple of the lads that I thought were going to be tricky to score with. In the 86th, 87th minute, I make it 3-1 with Torres to give us a few options for the Bible passage. So with a 3-1 win... We will hop into the Bible passage now. Okay, so into the Bible passage. And again, we had a few options what we could go for, but it's going to have to be Lucas Klosterman's 66th minute goal. At the start of the series, I thought Klosterman, Jonathan Tarr and um, Brewster are going to be the three that I'm going to struggle to score with. And I've already managed to score with Brewster and Klosterman, so it's just Jonathan Tarr to go. Um, now, the 66th minute with Lucas Klosterman leads us to Luke chapter 6, verse 6. And Luke chapter 6 talks about when Jesus says he is Lord of the Sabbath and he basically addresses some of the Pharisees, who some of the, the kind of religious teachers of the time, who were kind of becoming a little bit too legalistic. They were kind of putting rules on things, like almost man-made rules that they'd come up with themselves to try and feel like they were being holy and good. And Jesus was saying like, look, <laughs> the Bible is full of law, law, laws and rules to help you. But you guys are taking this to an extreme and you're, you know, to the point where in this passage, just before 6 verse 6, you know, his, Jesus' disciples are hungry and they're like, no, 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 you shouldn't be eating on the Sabbath. The Sabbath is like equivalent to sort of, say, a Sunday today as Christians, you know, kind of like a holy day. They're saying, yeah, if you're hungry, no, no, you shouldn't, shouldn't eat, eat food on the Sabbath. It's a holy day. And then as we come into this passage, Jesus comes across a man with a withered hand. And um, the Pharisees are already starting to judge him, thinking, oh, I bet you he's going to heal them on the Sabbath. And Jesus knows what they're thinking, and he basically goes and heals this man. And Jesus, his bottom line is, look, love is the most important thing. You know, not some of the legalistic man-made rules that we often put on ourselves. Love is the primary thing that, that always wins. As the Bible says, love never fails. And um, I think a lot of people have misconceptions about Christianity, that it's a really kind of legalistic religious thing that it brings more harm than good that you can't live a joyful life as a christian because you're trying to follow all these ticks tick box rules when actually most of the time that's christianity being done badly yes there's rules and laws in the bible and guidelines to live that are important to follow and when we mess up we need jesus grace to forgive us but so often you know we can put when Christianity is done badly, it's when people kind of put lots of man-made man come up with legalistic kind of laws and rules on themselves to try and make ourselves feel holy. Like, you know, if I, I have to pray this many times a day or read my Bible for this sort of how many this many hours a day in order to sort of for God to be pleased with me. And it's actually the God's like, no, it's, it's, a, it's about love. Christianity done well is a relationship with God, a day to day kind of journeying with God. You know, when your heart stirs you to pray, you pray. When your heart stirs you to read the Bible, you read your Bible. Now, there's times when you don't want to read your Bible or want to pray and you need to tell yourself to do it because it's going to be good for you. But actually, yeah, Christianity done well is a, is a friendship with God, a day to day walk with God. Like earlier today, my daughter was crying. She was distressed. She didn't quite see myself. And, and me and my wife were just thinking, how how can we help her we've tried to feed her you know we've tried to do to try to put her to sleep we've changed the nappy like what 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 do we do she doesn't seem unwell and we just we basically came before god and prayed and we were like god just please help her and uh, funnily enough half an hour later she did this massive poon army um and just completely cleared out her system and was totally fine afterwards and it's been like over 24 hours probably so actually I think it's been over 40 hours since she last did a poo and that was clearly the problem and praise god you know we, we felt called to pray we were like what do we do with our daughter we prayed 
And in that moment, you know, half an hour later, God helps us go to the toilet and she's now a whole lot better. And he's like, I know it's a funny example, but like even little things like that, it was kind of like a spontaneous kind of, it was in that moment. I was like, God, you know, I need to do this, do business for you. I need to pray in this moment. And our whole life should be that constant cycle of conversation with God, praying, thanking God when he helps us in situations like that, asking him for things and we need him to help us. Like it's a relationship rather than a religious kind of tick box exercise of trying to do all these things in order to get right with God. And that just that's a releasing joyous kind of um, kind of religion, so to speak, to follow. But I don't like using the word religion because it has negative connotations. You know, Christianity is a friendship with God, a relationship with God. If you don't know Jesus, I really want to encourage you that you can live a joyful life with God, knowing him, walking with him daily, talking with God, looking to him for, for help, praising him as he helps you and just constantly thanking him for his grace for you when you mess up and he's there to forgive you when you're sorry for what you've done. It's a beautiful thing. And yeah, love, love is the most important thing when it comes to Christianity. You know, Jesus loved us. God loves us first and foremost, and he calls us to love others. And yeah, if someone's hungry, you give them food. If if they, you know, need to be prayed for for healing, you pray for them for healing. You know, whether it's on a Sunday, a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, whatever day it is, like God wants us to be loving as Christians. And yeah, if you're a Christian, be encouraged by that and be stirred to, to live a life just of being naturally led by God into these situations. Um, and if you, if you don't know God, then yeah, it's it's wonderful to do life with God, step by step with Him, and um, yeah, that's my encouragement for this uh, for this for this uh, episode. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to get episode three out. Um, I'm going back to work next week, so whenever I get round to doing it, amongst being a dad. Um, but yeah, for now, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the next one.